السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله وشكر الله It's a great blessing to be here in this blessed company, in this blessed masjid with this uh, blessed gathering and it's actually a bit difficult to speak with the Mubarak Kiswa here الحمد لله وشكر الله but uh, inshallah we seek Allah's pleasure in sharing uh, the blessed teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, the verses that were recited, Inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira litu'minu billahi wa rasulihi wa tu'azziruhu wa tuwaqiruhu wa tusabbihuhu bukratan wa asila that verily we have sent you as a witness, as a bringer of glad tidings, and as a warner with the ultimate end and consequence that you all, the Ummah, believe in Allah and His Messenger and that you and that you all support Him and venerate Him and glorify Him morning and evening. And the scholars of Tafsir discuss who is the Him in these verbs and so it's a bit difficult to translate. Some said that the first two refer to our Prophet Wasallam. And so that you support the Prophet and that you venerate the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then the third one is for the divine and that you glorify him, Allah Ta'ala, morning and evening. But uh, others felt their opinion was that in fact all three refer to the divine. And so that you support Allah by supporting his religion and that you venerate Allah and that you glorify, glorify Allah in the morning and evening. But how do we... Venerate Allah Ta'ala is through venerating the sacred law and venerating the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So his, the meaning of the Prophet is always there. And if we begin with the third uh, command or consequence in, in, this, in this ayah, glorifying Allah in morning and evening, the remembrance of Allah is something the Prophet emphasized the most, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a man came to him in the hadith of the Muslim Ahmad and said, Oh God's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the details of the religion have proven very numerous for me. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. Give me one thing to hold on to that I can just, that I can just, you know, make it my, my personal thing to, to cling to. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La yazalu azza wa jal. Let your tongue always be moist with the remembrance of Allah, mighty and majestic. And in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the example of the one that makes remembrance of Allah compared to the one that does not is like the example of the living and the dead." And so, the first principle to to sort of focus on in the context of victory, seeking victory, is: Are we people of Allah's remembrance? Are we people of the of regular, consistent remembrance of God? Bukratum wa asila, a portion in the morning, a portion in the evening. That's a very practical thing. That of course, in addition to the five prescribed prayers, to make it a personal commitment, as part of the principle mentioned two words earlier. What to aziruhu? What to aziruhu? That you support him, because how do we support God and His Messenger? is by taking these teachings seriously. But the second one then, veneration, this is something I wanted to just reflect together with the Blessed Company about the examples, many examples, and there's countless, of how the companions would venerate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith of Amr ibn al-As عنه, on his deathbed, that he, this is in Sahih Muslim, he cried extensively on his deathbed and then he turned his face to the wall and he finally said ma kana ahadun ahabba ilayya min rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this companion is about to leave this world and he says there's no one more beloved to me than god's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa la ajalla fi ayni minhu nor is there anyone more majestic in my eyes than him sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma kuntu utiqu an amla aynayya minhu ijlalan lahu and i was not able I could not bear to take my fill of looking at him due to my deep veneration of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
that the companions, it was actually difficult to look too long at the, at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the great Jalal, the great majestic and, and, and the reflection of the divine majesty in the majesty of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is also reflected in the beautiful lines of poetry of another noble companion, Hassan ibn Thabit, who, one of the poets of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, Lamma nadartu ila anwarihi sata'at, when I looked at his lights that had risen, shining, out of awe of him, I had to place my hand in front of my eyes. Uh, out of fear for my eyes, could they, could they even stand? Could my eyesight handle and withstand the Im intense beauty of his form? So I could not look upon him except with, within my capacity. Lights from his light drown in his light. And from his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the rising of the sun and the rising of the full moon. Ruhun min al nur fi jismin min al qamar, a soul made of light in a in a body from the moon itself. Kahillatin, that is like a gown nusijat bil anjum zuhuri that was sewn from the sparkling stars. And this is the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the understanding of the companions. Allah be pleased with them all together. Uh, this woman, Qayla bint Makhrama, she said that I was once sitting behind the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and he was sitting with his blessed knees up and he was holding his knees. And she said, when I saw him in this posture of humility, ﷺ, I, I started to tremble out of fear. I started to tremble out of fear. And so one of the companions sitting with the Messenger وسلم, said, this, uh, this woman is trembling because of your presence, O God's Messenger. And, uh, and so the, the woman uh, narrates that Allah's Messenger, without turning around, without looking at her, he says, Ya miskinatu, alaykis sakinatu which is a poetic, he says, Oh, humble woman, be calm. Be calm. Alayki sakina. And she says, as soon as God's messenger said it, وسلم, God removed that fear from my heart, that awe from my heart. And so the, the, the majesty of the Prophet, وسلم, we have so many narrations of his immense beauty, like Jabir ibn Samura, the great companion in Sahih Muslim, he says, Kana wajuhu sallam, mithla shamsi wal qamar. He says his very face was like the sun and the moon. And Abu Huraira said, Ka'anna shams tajrifi wajhihi. Anhu, he said, it's as if the sun were flowing in his blessed face. Yet, Allah Ta'ala combined that perfect beauty with perfect majesty. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so it was even difficult to, to, to look too long. And so veneration of the Prophet was also a consequence of realizing his immense blessings, the barakah. And how many narrations are there of the barakah that the companions experienced by his presence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira said, anhu, Ya Rasulullah, inni la asma'u minka hadithin kathira ansa. So he once complained, he said, God's messenger, I hear so many hadith from you, but I forget them. And so the, the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upsut ridak, you know, spread out your cloak. Fabasattuhu, so he spread it out. So the Prophet with his two blessed hands started making a motion like scooping into the gar open garment. Then he said, place it upon yourself. And so Abu Huraira placed it upon himself. I never forgot a hadith after that. I never once forgot a hadith after that. Ibn Abbas, the young companion who was the cousin of the Prophet, he said, as Imam Bukhari relates, that the Prophet said, uh, Rasulullah ila sadrihi. One day the Prophet embraced the young blessed boy to his blessed Mubarak chest, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he said, Allahumma allimhul kitab. Uh, Allahumma allimhul kitab. Oh Allah, teach him the book. And in a riwayah wa faqihu fiddin. And give him deep understanding of the religion. Ibn Abbas, what, is he what does he become? He becomes the eminent companion in terms of ta'wil or tafsir of the Qur'an. To the extent that he's called tarjuman al-Qur'an the interpreter par excellence of the Qur'an. And the entire tafsir corpus goes back to Ibn Abbas primarily. 
He is the great interpreter of the Quran amongst the companions, and his teachings then are distilled to the tafsir tradition. Where did it start? It started with the prophetic embrace. It started with the prophetic embrace. Uh, more examples of the barakah. Hazrat Ali ibn Abi Talib, karamallah wajha, that he said that when the Prophet sent me to Yemen to teach and to, to judge uh, with his, his expertise of the sacred law, he says, Ya Rasulullah, tabathuni wa ana shab, aqdi baynahum wa la adri man qada. He says, you're sending me, but I'm so young. And, you know, I have to judge amongst them as a, as a qadi. And, I, you know, I'm not sure if I'll know the judgment. So what happens in the according to the hadith, فَضَرَبَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِيَدِهِ فِي صَدْرِ So the Prophet وسلم, strikes the chest of Hazrat Ali وجه, with his blessed hand. And then he says, Allah مِهْدِ قَلْبَهُ وَثَبِّتْ لِثَانَهُ Oh Allah, guide his heart and make his speech steadfast, firm, and truthful. So Sayyidina Ali Karamallah, he says, فَوَلَّذِي الْحَبَّ So by the one that splits the seeds, because one of the names of Allah in the Qur'an, فَالِكُ الْحَبِّ وَالنَّوَى The splitter of seeds. By the one who splits seeds, مَا شَكَكْتُ فِي قَضَاءٍ بَيْنَ اثْنَيْنْ بَعْد I never had any doubt about the right judgment between two people thereafter. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Waj. Safina, the great companion Safina, he said, the Prophet instructed him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I need you to carry something. Ihmal fa'innama anta safina. And it was a heavy thing. But he says, carry it because you're a safina, which means a huge ship. And says, you, you are a ship. Safina says, Falaw hamantu yawma idhin waqru ba'ir. He says, from that day onwards, if I had to carry a whole camel's load, which is a large weight, if I had to carry a whole camel's load, o ba'irain, or two camel's load, O Thalatha, or three camels load. O Arba, or four camels load. O Khamsa, or five camels load. O Sitta, or six camels load. O Saba, or seven camels load. Ma thakula It wasn't heavy for me anymore. This is the barakah of the Prophet ﷺ, and these experiences cultivated this profound veneration. This uh, uh, this profound veneration in the hearts of the companions, radiallahu anhum, jami'an. In the morning, every morning in Medina, after Fajr, the khuddam, the people who would serve the city, would bring their buckets of water, which was the water source for the city. They would bring it to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every morning. He would dip his blessed hand in each one for the barakah to be sent to, throughout the city. And they said in the hadith, even on a cold morning, they did that as a regular practice. Ibn Mas'ud, anhu, the great uh, young shepherd that became a great, one of the great imams of the companions at the, time of the, uh, uh, at the time of the Sahaba and thereafter, how did his uh, uh, blessed scholarship begin? Uh, he was one of the early converts, and he once said, Ya Rasulullah, alimni min hadhal qawl. He said, oh God's messenger, teach me from this blessed teaching. And so the Prophet, فَمَسَحَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ رَأْسِي So the Prophet ﷺ wipes the head of Ibn Mas'ud. And he says, يَرْحَمُكُ اللَّهِ May Allah have mercy on you. فَإِنَّكَ غُلَيِّمْ مُعَلَّمْ Because you are a young boy, but you shall be taught. You, have special, you will receive special knowledge. And Ibn, and Ibn Mas'ud then becomes, who does he become? When we read the history, he becomes the great Imam of Kufa. And the teachings of Ibn Mas'ud are distilled, which eventually become the school of Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa emerges from the madrasa, from the seminary, the teachings that were that were remnant in Kufra, from the seeds planted by Ibn Mas'ud, as well as Ali ibn Abi Talib, the two great imams of Kufa. Allah be pleased with them both. This is this so the, so the and and the largest madhab historically in our in our ummah, right? This this started with the blessed wipe of the Prophet over the head of Ibn Mas'ud, and Ibn Mas'ud had this he had the sacred relics. So he was, the, he was the carrier of the Na'al Sharif, you know, the blessed sandals of the Prophet Wasallam, as well as the Siwak, the tooth stick, as well as the Wisada, the pillow. And Ibn Mas'ud, the, the companion, he was min ahlil bitana. So when the companions were with the Prophet Wasallam and he returned home, they had to stop outside. Ibn Mas'ud could continue on because he had to set up the blessed belongings of the Prophet. Wasallam, and the, this, this, the two na'alain, the two sandals of the Prophet Wasallam, reflect on the barakah of those sandals. Because when Nabi Musa Wasallam came for his appointment with, with the Divine, Allah Ta'ala commanded him, Ikhla'na alayk. 
that remove your two sandals. But when our blessed messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was taken on Isra and Mi'raj from Mecca to Jerusalem and then up through the cosmos above the seven heavens to the Sidrat al Muntaha, to the Lot tree, and then past that where Hazrat Jibreel Alayhi Salam could not go, Allah Ta'ala did not command him to take off his two sandals. He got to go with his blessed sandals, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so what does that mean? That means that on that blessed, blessed night, that the entire cosmos was under the shadow of his sandals, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His two na'alain. If we cannot fathom the rank of his blessed sandals, how can we fathom his blessed rank with Allah Ta'ala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And this is why in our tradition, the na'al is like, this, it's placed on the kufi because it's the crown of the believer. And many ulama, there, there's an entire genre in our tradition of poetry on the na'alain, sharifain. Poetry on the, the na'aliyat. Poetry on the sandals themselves. How mubarak. So, where does this then, this, so they experienced all this barakah, and what did that do to their blessed hearts, the noble companions? They fell in love. They fell madly in love. And this is what, you know, we read the narrations over and over about the love they had. Hazrat Ali, Karamallah Waj, he was once asked, Kayfa kana hubbukum li Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was once asked, what was the love of you all like for God's messenger? He said, kana Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, God's messenger, peace be upon him, ahabba ilayna min amwalina. He was more beloved than all of our wealth. Wa awladina and more than our children. Wa abaina and more than our parents. Wa ummahatina and more than our mothers. Wa ahabba ilayna min al ma'il barid ala zama. And more beloved than cool water when one is dying of thirst. And so the companions reflected the beautiful hadith of the Prophet None of you truly believe, none of you truly believe until I am more beloved to him than his parents, than his children, and all of humanity. And at Khaybar, at Khaybar, they were having difficulty with one of the fortresses, and the Prophet said, in a hadith, Tomorrow I shall give the banner, I shall give the flag to a man that Allah will give victory on his hands. And the reflection tonight is Surah Al-Fat, the Surah of Victory, which was revealed after Hudaybiyah when the peace treaty was enacted. Because in Islam, victory comes through peace. Because then we can make the da'wah in, in, in peaceful coexistence and the light shines so brightly. But so the principle of fat is related to the principle of love because re the hadith, what is the, the Prophet says, وسلم, tomorrow I shall give the banner, the flag, to a man that Allah will give victory on his hands. And how does he describe the man? Sallallahu wa sallam. He loves God and his messenger. Allah wa and God and his messenger love him. And all the companions that night were eager to see if which one of them would be it. And that morning after Fajr, the Prophet asked after the prayer, Sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, Aina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Where is Hazrat Ali? And so what was conjoined in the hadith though? Victory and mutual love between the believer and God and his messenger. Allah and his messenger. Ajib. So love is the foundation. And we reflect this woman at Uhud. At the battle of Uhud. That she came after the battle was done. And this was the time, 70 plus martyrs, 70 martyrs of the blessed companions. Allah be pleased with them all. So she came, she, and the rumor had spread that God's messenger had been struck. Although, alhamdulillah wa shukrillah, he was not killed on that day, sallallahu alayhi wa But they, that rumor had spread. So she comes eagerly find, asking this Ansari woman, how is Allah's messenger? And they say, they say, your father was martyred. She says, inna lillahi wa inna How is Allah's messenger? They say your brother was martyred. She says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. How is Allah's messenger? They say your husband was martyred. She says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. How is Allah's messenger? Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They say he's fine. She says, Not till I, I need to see him. Take me to see him. And they take her and she sees the blessed Sallallahu alayhi wasallam and she says, Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalal. You know, every tribulation after you is. Is it's small and minor. So long as you are okay, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we can bear anything. 
what was in these blessed people's hearts? How much love, how much veneration? Allah be pleased with them all. And we'll conclude with the beautiful story of Hazrat Bilal, عنه, that after the passing of the Prophet وسلم, and Hazrat Anas said it was like the lights went out. He said when the Prophet arrived in Medina after, at the Hijrah, everything was lit up. He says when, when he passed away, وسلم, everything became dark in our lives. Everything was dark. And so Hazrat Bilal had moved to Sham, Syria. And after many years, then he has a dream of the Prophet وسلم, and he says, Ya Bilal, what is this distance? Why haven't you visit us, vis visited us? O Kamaqal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Bilal woke up so distressed. He was so worried. So he rushes the first thing in the morning on his horse. He goes straight to Medina Munawra. He goes straight to the grave, Rawda Sharifa, grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He gives his salam. He starts kissing the grave. And then Hassan and Hussein come, radiallahu anhumah. And he starts kissing the blessed grandsons of the Prophet Wasallam, And then they say, make the adhan. You know, it's been so many years, make the adhan. And so he starts the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then when they heard his voice, the streets started coming out. They thought, did the messenger come back? And when he reached, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Wasallam, they said, Medina, before or nor after had never had that much crying. Everyone came out in utter tears, longing for the Messenger. May Allah Ta'ala make us people who long for the Messenger. May He make us people who love the Allah and His Messenger and are loved by Allah and His Messenger with Allah's lutf and afia, with tamam al afia. May Allah Ta'ala make us people of remembrance of Allah and veneration of Allah and His Messenger. وَصَلِّ لَهُمَّ لَسَيْدِرَ مُحَمَّدَ النَّبِيُّ الْأُمِّي وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْمِي وَسَلِّمْ وَالْحَمْدُ